<laughs> We're gonna have a good time! Hey guys, it's Laka or Omar here from Aztec Gaming, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Zuljin. Yeah, so Zuljin is one of my favorite heroes in Hots. I mean, what isn't there to like about him? He's a tall buff troll dude. But yeah, basically, uh, yeah, he's 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 all right at the moment. Not not the best, definitely not meta, but you know I love to flop him out every now and again in a hero league. Very fun. Um. So basically first, I'm just going to go over, like just do a basic overview on Zul'jin. That's because he has a lot of counters, there's only a few maps you can pick him on and his... While his kit is quite simple, I guess in essence, he's quite difficult to master I'd say just because of how you like learning to balance his um, passive here at the right times. Knowing when to use it, when to not use it. As well as he's also very immobile, so you need to know how to position properly, when to kite and all that kind of stuff. So basically, I'm just going to load up try mode. Let's see what skin to flop out. Alright, I'll flop this skin out. I'm just going to go over some basic stuff. So I'm going to go over first um, when to pick Zul'jin and when not to pick him. Comp wise, you definitely do not want to pick him into blinds at all. Like uh, Stuff like Cassia, Joe, Lily. You're just gonna, you're just gonna do honestly no damage. Like, you'd probably, preferably pick him uh, around last. Otherwise, you know the blinds are just gonna. I've had it many times where I pick Zuljin early and the enemy team just drafts Johanna and um, Johanna and Cassie, and I just do no damage. So you definitely don't want to pick it into that. Another uh, comp you definitely do not want to pick it into is heavy dive, such as I don't know. Diablo, Arthas, Illidan, I don't know, any, if they have any kind of heavy frontline where they can just dive you and you, you can't really get away because you're very immobile, uh, you're not going to have a good time, which is not going to be a good time to pick Zul'jin. When you do want to pick him is uh, basically if you need a powerful single target ranged assassin, he scales into late game very, very well if you can stack well. He has a few stacking quests. and um, But yeah, you should only really pick him... Yeah, I mean, if you want early game, there's no reason to pick him over Tracer, I'll just say that, like... You should only pick him if you already have good... A decent early early game with another ranged assassin. You don't want to pick him with something like, you know, Nazebo or something. There's no point in having two late game scaling heroes, you're just going to get destroyed early game. But yeah, if you need... If you want, you know, a ranged assassin who's a monster late game, yeah, Zul'jin's a great pick for that, in that situation. Going into maps, um... I'll go over his best maps first. His best maps are maps that typically two lane maps or smaller maps, ones that you can scale really well on. Uh, sorry for the uh, motorcycle, whatever the fuck that is. But yeah, typically maps that you can uh, stack very well on. So I'd say Braxis, it's a two lane, very small. It's really easy to get stacks with your passive on it. Uh, you want Axe. Because honestly, Zildjian's strength really relies on how well you can stack this um, passive. Um, I'll go over the passive more later, but uh, yeah, Volskaya as well. Volskaya is great because Volskaya almost always goes late. It doesn't really end early that much. Um, also, you can get stacks off the uh, protector, so it's not that hard to stack up pretty well on. Um, Tomb's also quite good because it's a very small map. You can, yeah, the rotating lanes is not that big of a deal, so. It's very small, it's very easy to be always auto-attacking people to stack up your passive. Um, maps that are okay, battlefields, you can stack decently well on, two lane map. Dragon Shine as well. It's also not that bad to stack on, you can stack off the Dragon Knight. Um, Shrines is okay, wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, the maps you should probably never pick them on are uh, Towers. Sky and Cursed Hollow. These maps are just, I don't know, they're too objective focused and for example on Cursed Hollow, if you lose an objective early game, you're just going to be very far behind. It's not really not worth it. Um, yeah, they're just, it's just not suited to those kind of maps, the bigger maps. Um, in terms of that, I'll start talking about abilities and uh, firstly I want to talk about his passive, Berserker. Yeah, so basically, to be able to play Zul'jin well, you really need to know when to use your passive and when not to use it. Like, 
if you know that you're going to take a lot of damage in a small amount of time, you shouldn't be using it at all. But if you're in a safe position where you can just auto without taking any damage, um, you should just activate it to get some damage out. If you start getting low and you might be in uh, danger of taking a lot of damage or dying, then I'd suggest turning it off. You're just going to... Honestly, it's very hard to explain, but the more and more you play Zul'jin, the more and more you'll be comfortable with knowing when and when and when to like uh, activate or turn off your passive. It turns on and off very quickly, so you can just you know activate and deactivate it. And there is an animation, so you can tell when it's on and off. And um, another main thing is when you're playing Zul'jin, to really be a good Zul'jin, you need to stack your passive. Like you just need to stack this passive, otherwise Zul'jin's not a good hero. Um, you have to be. You have to be always looking for opportunities where you can fit in auto attacks no matter what. You can't be playing safe at the back. No matter what, you must always be stacking this passive. That's like probably something I can't stress enough. You really want to get to this 75. The basic attack range is huge. And then at 150, also your W revolves twice. Also, this stacks infinitely. It doesn't just stop at 150. So you should just always be trying to um, auto attack to just keep this stacking up. Keep getting attack damage. Every five orders gives you one attack damage. Um, after that we'll be going into abilities, uh, his Q, you pretty much just chuck it out, I'll come to the dummy, gives you what, uh, yeah, 50% extra damage for the next 3 hits, nothing much to say, W, you chuck out the 2 axes, do a bit of damage, they slow, not bad for kiting and everything, uh, let me take some damage first, regeneration, it's um it's a channel has a 15 second cooldown. You can use it just to heal up quickly, if you want. If you take any damage, it'll be cancelled though. Um, and with that, I'll explain the ults later when we get into talents and everything. But um basically with the talents, ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, so we'll go over each of the level one talents first. Bone slicer, this talent's alright, but you're not going to be wanting to pick it most of the time. There is a build, however, that I'll explain later where you do take this talent. It's good in some situations, mainly because of the uh, additionally Grievous Mark is no longer removed by basic attacks. That's quite good. Um, recklessness, it's not bad, it's a safe, safer pick. A lot of Zul'jins do opt for this just because it gives him the most basic attack damage, I guess. But it does re require that you be at the below 50% health th threshold. Um, my personal favorite in this Killing tier spree. is Headhunter for sure. It's just um, every takedown you get gives you 2% damage and then that's 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 a that's a good part about it but my favorite part about it is definitely the attack range increased by 1.1 once you kill everyone. On some maps, like most of the time you should be able to finish this quest if your team is doing alright. Like everyone just dying once. And coupled with the 75, uh, the extra range from this talent when you uh, auto attack 75 times, your attack range is going to be 7.7 .7, which is rivaled with Vala who has Farfly Quiver pretty much, so it's going to be one of the highest attack ranges in the game that's why I love taking this talent, um, Choose a talent. let me actually increase this Choose to 30 so anyway yeah, Choose a talent. I'm just going to go over the base build first and what I take, I'll go Headhunter first and then next, um, Tro Troll's Blood this talent, I used to take it a bit more often. It's quite good. It gives you more sustain, so that's actually quite nice. But typically, don't take it. 90% um, of the time, you'll be taking a Mighty Rage. It's just way too good of a talent, even after the nerfs that happened a few months ago. But basically, 20 second cooldown, you lose 50% of your HP. And you regain that, you get 5 armor while that's happening. But that just has really good synergy with this kit, given that um, you do you attack a lot faster. You attack 1% faster for each 1% of your health missing. Basically, when you see an opportunity where you can pop Money Rage and go ham, and you don't throw the damage, you just do it. Get, get a lot of damage out. You get a lot more damage with that. And uh, you just use it. One thing that I'll say is do not pop a Money Rage if, you are, if there's threat of taking damage because there's been many times where I've popped a money rage and someone's just left on me or the enemy team has seen that and they've just taken advantage of it and you just died. Um, so just be careful with how you use it but it is I would say the best overall talent on the on the tier. Voodoo Shuffle I actually t have been starting to take quite often. It is very good into heroes such as um, Malfury and Root. It's only 10 seconds and it completely removes the Root or against Arthur side say as well. 
he uh, chucks the W on you, just instantly cleanse it. Just works like a, a cleanse, basically. You remove the root or the slow. It's also really good against slows as well, so yeah. But it, yeah, because it's 10 second cooldown, it's great against some heroes. You pick that situationally. And passively, yeah, I guess it also lowers um, the mana cost and cooldown of regeneration, which is very nice. Um, going into level 7, Arcanite Axes is probably the best talent on this tier for the build I go. It's just really good. On maps, on the, his best maps, like I mentioned before, Braxis, Tomb, um, Dragonshire, those kind of maps, you can stack this up quite well. Um, and it just becomes very, very powerful late game once you also finish the You Want Axe quest. You get it to 150 and it spins around twice. Yeah, early game, the, the Twin Cleave, it doesn't really do that much damage, but with, with stacks on this, it really starts to hurt a lot late game. I'll go over the others quickly. Vicious Assault, not bad, I guess. You do this with the Q build, which I'll go over more later. Um, yeah, just because it synergizes as well with the rest of the Q talents, like the Bone Slicer at 1. Um, Ferocity, I used to go this with the auto attack build, but it's an alright talent, but I just think if you're going full auto attack, he, he also he already does uh, decent auto attacks without going all the auto attack talents, so I think getting Twin Cleave uh, damage overall is better, Arcanine Axes. Going over the ults, um, to be honest, I'd say this is probably... This this is very situational. It really depends on what you're versing, how you're feeling that game. Uh, I'd probably say about 50-50 is how I'd say how often I go one or the other of these talents. Um, Taz Dingo, you definitely want to pick this if they have a lot of threats that you can just they can just pop you. It's really good into stuff like Tracer with a pulse bomb and get stuffed later on. Um, anything that can just like one shot you or pop you, it's good against heavy dive, lets you just live for, you know, that four seconds longer. It might mean that you survive or that you get healed up, or even that four seconds you can kill someone in it. Just get way more damage out. So it really just depends on the comp you're versing, if you're versing a lot of threats. Guillotine, I actually really like using this talent. It synergizes really well with the money Rage, given that it does more damage uh, based on how much health you have, so the lower health you have, the more damage it does. And, um, yeah, I'll pick this if I'm not versing heavy dive, if I'm versing a lot of backline, something uh, immobile like Morales or Ana, you can, you know, pop this, chuck out your guillotine, does a lot of damage. You can almost one shot uh, someone with a bit more follow up damage. A twin cleave and auto and guillotine will kill a lot of squishies in the backline, so I also really like taking this talent. It honestly just depends on the situation, which talent you take. Um, the next tier, no matter what build I decide to go, auto, Q, or the regular build that I go most of the time, I always take Eye of Zildjian. Ensnare's okay, but it's like a 60 second cooldown, you chuck a net out, it's not that great. Eye of Zildjian, once you stack up your autos, you have 30% move speed. 30% move speed for a hero that has no mobility, it just gives you so much more kiting uh, potential. and. Um, also chase, a lot of the times um, before 10, uh, sorry before 13, before you get this talent with Zul'jin, you just be autoing someone that can just run away with you just by running because you have no other mobility. With this you can start chasing really well because of the 30% move speed. It's just my personal favorite on the tier and I think it is the best. Lacerate used to be good with the old W build but they have nerfed it and the slow is now not as strong. I just think the move speed is the most valuable. Gives you an almost permanent 30% move speed in team fights. Um, next tier, wrong place, wrong time is um, what you'd be going most of the time with the normal build. Um, just because it makes, given you've already taken Arcanine Axes, once you stack you want Axe as well, it just makes your Twin Cleaves that uh, so much better, and it also just helps you with stacking you want Axe. Every time you land it in the middle, it's going to do that extra chunk of damage, it's going to give you a 5 stack, so you're getting more auto, uh, auto attack damage as well. It just It's just giving you a lot more burst damage, and um, it's good at taking down structures as well. You, once you get the revolving axe, it starts doing a lot of damage, um, as well as helping you get stacks. Going over the others, No Mercy is good with the Q build. I'll go over why you pick the Q build later. Um, let the killing begin. It's alright, I used to take this... 
D4 when I was a bit more of a noob with the auto attack Zul'jin, but I just think wrong place at the wrong time is better. You don't really, you already get a lot of attack speed anyway, so you just kind of bloating yourself, I guess, with attack speed, taking all these talents and like, as well as taking Ferocity at 7. You, don't, you just don't really need it. You already get decent attack speed. Um, level 20, this is situational as well. Um, most people, a lot of people like taking a money resilience when you take Tazdingo. It makes your Tazdingo 5 seconds. Also, you heal um, once you finish with Tazdingo. Buzzsaw is also very, very nice with, um, with um, Guillotine. It just makes it continue traveling forward. It lets, uh, if they're running away from you, it just does a lot more damage. And it also full heals you if you kill someone with it, which is very, very nice. It's on a, uh, Guillotine is on a quite low cooldown, so... It's not a bad talent. Um, my personal favorite that I take a lot of the time is Forest Medicine. It's Mayhem. just so nice. It's um, your regeneration, which you usually have to channel and gets interrupted by damage. You can now cast it at any time without it being interrupted. And it just gives you that nice heal every 15 seconds. Um, if you have... If at level 4 you took Voodoo Shuffle, it's every 10 seconds. It's... Uh, I think it's actually every 9 seconds, but yeah, it's just very nice. It heals you for 30% of your health every, like, 10 seconds. It's just very nice to give you that late game sustain. Like, um, with the money Resilience, uh, I'm not a big fan of having the healing tied to the ult. So, I like having that healing sometimes when I get chunked to, like, maybe half late, late in the game. I can just pop, pop a regeneration out in a team fight without having to channel it or take damage or whatever and I don't have to rely on the Tazdingo for a bit of healing or whatever it just gives you that nice extra bit of sustain but all three of these talents are very good um, next I'm going to be going into the three builds I guess but basically what I've taken here this is this is the main build that I go 90% of the time this is the regular build you go Headhunter or Recklessness I prefer Headhunter just for the attack range and everything um, Amani Rage, very nice, gives you a lot of damage when you pop it, and it's really good synergy with Guillotine. Um, level 7, you go Arcanite Axes, just for the stacking damage. Um, this one's situational, depends on the game, Guillotine or Tazdingo. Always take Eye of Zildjian for the move speed, always take Wrong Place, Wrong Time, and Forest Medicine or the others. Honestly, that's also situational. Personal preference comes down to that. Um, another build I want to go over is um, the Q build. This is a very situational build. I saw some people on NA take it, some Zildjian mains. Um, and I tried it out. It is quite good. I'll just quickly the select the talents that you go. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. So yeah, like either one of these two. Um, but basically, with the Q build, it makes your Q... So this now... With the level 1 talent Bone Slicer, your Grievous Throw, before it was um, 3 attacks and your Q would drop off, now it's um, now it stays on the target infinitely. So, basically, it just never drops off. So that's very nice in some situations, but it has very good synergy with some of the later talents. At level 7, you get Vicious Assault. It increases it by 3 seconds and the damage bonus by 35%. That makes your Q now... Um, instead of marked enemies take 50% bonus damage from the next three basic attacks, they take 85% increased. Uh, and instead of 6 seconds, it goes to 9 seconds, and it has an 8 second cooldown, so you have over 100% uptime with the debuff if you land it on a target. And it doesn't drop off, so... Basically, you chuck your Q on the target. Oh, I missed that, that's actually... Very unfortunate. Let me take cooldowns here quickly. But basically, the, the auto... The, the Grievous Wounds just doesn't drop off and it just it has 100% uptime. By the time this debuff drops off, my Q is off cooldown every single time. Um, so this is really, really good for dealing with Frontline. Uh, obviously, there are some problems with this. This build becomes very, very, very reliant on you hitting your Q. If you don't hit your Q, it's just going to be way worse than just going the regular builds. But against some Frontline, um, it is quite a good talent, uh, talent build, um, and also I take it, this is mainly the only reason I'll take it, um, No Mercy at level 16, 
Zul'jin's basic attacks against enemy heroes, Mark of Grievous throw, now ignore armor. And basically, I'll pick this into Garrosh, and it honestly just completely destroys him. Um, Garrosh is passive, he gains the armor when he's lower on HP. Um, but you're just going to be chucking out your Q, autoing him. He doesn't. He's going to be thinking he's a lot more tanky than he is, but your autos are ignoring armor, and he gets deleted, honestly. It's also very good against heroes with high armor uptime like ETC, that kind of stuff. I like taking this on Battlefield of Eternity as well, just because you get it gives you very good immortal race, um, just because the autos don't drop off, and it gives you way more damage bonus. It's way this is uh, by far the best build for racing, for immortal and that kind of stuff, and for the armor ignore. But I'll probably only pick this about, I'd say five percent of the time. If I'm playing Battlefield, and if I'm playing like against Garrosh or something, and I really want the armor ignore against Frontline, just because it's very reliant on you hitting the Q. If you miss the Q, you're just going to do no damage for 8 seconds. But it is quite a good build as well. Um, you can just take whatever at 20. That's that's the second build. Um, another build that I used to pick when I was more of a noob, I wouldn't recommend this build that much, is you just go all the auto attack talents. So, Headhunter... Amani Rage, Ferocity, Taz Dingo, Eye of Zul'jin, Let the Killing Begin, Forest Medicine. This is basically just the normal build, but you swap out Arcanite Axes and Wrong Place, Wrong Time for the two uh, attack speed talents. It's more auto attack based, but you sacrifice, what I learned is you sacrifice way too much damage from your Twin Cleave. Your Twin Cleave just becomes like pretty much a wet noodle if you go this build. It makes your auto attacks a bit faster, like in team fights, but... I just prefer having Twin Cleave do a lot more damage, so... I... I mean, you can go this build, but I think the Twin Cleave build is better most of the time. Um, with that, there's just a few final tips and tricks that I want to go over with Zul'jin. Wait, let me just go back to the normal builds. Choose a talent. 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 I'll go this because I want to demonstrate something. Um, there's a few things I want to go over. There's going to be times where you're going, to, you're getting chased by an enemy, um, and if you chuck out the W normally, like you're running away, you chuck out the W like that, it's just not going to hit them. Um, and this is basically just learning how to angle your W. Say for example the target is here, you can see how the W, its skill shot is like, it's a circle basically. So you're just going to have to get used to using it to hit the target. Say if, if the target's really close, you're getting chased by someone, you need to get the slow on them, you need the damage. You you really want to learn how to angle your W for the best use in a situation. So if the target's about this close to me, I'd probably chuck my W here. It's going to hit them, it's going to give you that slow. If you chucked it out normally where they're standing, if you chucked it here, it's just gonna it's just gonna mess you up. Wait, let me check on toggle cooldowns. If you chuck it out here, it's not gonna slow them when you're running away. Um, for example, if I move a bit further back and I chuck out my W, this is also not gonna hit him. You're gonna wanna angle it slightly, say about here, and then that hits him, of course. So you just um, getting good at Zildjian, you really wanna learn how to angle your W correctly. Um, that's one of the main tips I'd teach. Um, Knowing when to use a money rage, you always want a money rage before chucking out guillotine. It just maximizes the damage you get from guillotine. If you're chucking out guillotine on full HP, it's just going to do no damage. So you just want to always use a money rage before you do that, and make sure you're not using a money rage when there's a lot of threats on you. If, so, if someone's if someone's on you and you're taking a lot of damage, you probably shouldn't chuck out a money uh, a money rage. You'll just die a lot quicker. It takes 10 seconds for you to be healed back up the same amount. Um, Using Taz Dingo correctly, um, basically, uh, there's there's going to be situations where the enemy team will try to CC you, and uh, before you get low HP, so that you cannot use Taz Dingo when you get low, you're going to have to uh, try recognize the situations where they will be holding CC um, for you when you get low. So you might have to pop Taz Dingo slightly earlier, maybe at like 20-30% HP depending on the situation, but 
try to recognize that uh, higher up, a lot of the players will try to hold CC for when you get low, so you can't pop Tazdingo at the last second um, when you're CC'd. Um, but that would obviously just come with more experience. Um, another really good trick early game with Zildjian that I like to use. Let me just take a bit of damage quickly. Alright. Uh, when I'm running away from someone, just for a very quick heal, you pop your E and keep moving. It's just, it pretty much doesn't really slow down your movement and you get one tick of the E is actually quite a potent heal. It's not bad. That's 400 health at level th uh, 30, I guess. It's not that much, but it's just something that could honestly save your life. It's like taking damage from one less auto. You just do the quick E cancel, keep moving. Um, that's what, another one of those tricks. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much else I need to really say. Let me just go over some of this stuff with W as well. But basically, a lot of the times you'll be sieging, you just want to chuck your W out, get quick stacks. Wait, I think this stacked way too high, deleted him. 6,000 damage extra. But with the revolving axe, you can delete buildings. It's very nice. Chuck it out, get quick stacks. You should always be trying to uh, use this off cooldown earlier on in the game, just because you want to stack up your Arcanine Axis as much as possible and try to hit it in the center with wrong place, wrong time. But other than that, I don't think there's much else to go over. Um, I will be doing possibly a gameplay guide, a uh, gameplay of me playing Zildjian where I'll be just be going over what I do throughout the game later on. Um, so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, just check out the, the Aztec... Um, the Aztec Twitter, you'll be seeing when we play our games and everything. Um, we play on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the a ANZ HGC Premier League. And uh, yeah, support us on Twitter with the hashtag AztecWin. Um, hashtag, uh, what else is there to say? Yeah, basically you can find us on Twitter, you can find our handles below and everything. And I'll also include some links with uh, just the, um, what's it called? The HOTS talent page where I'll just be, where I'll just show the talent builds for each of the builds that I went over today. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, thanks for watching, guys.